Hey everyone, it's Ryan 1940 here, and we are back in Sea Power Naval Combat in the Missile Age. Continuing our ASW tutorial, we are using the Charlie's mission that comes with the game, so you're welcome to just play along with us and kind of see how we go about conducting our search in a in the open ocean where we have no idea where the submarine can be. So let's take a look at the map here. We are in the GI UK gap, right? This is the ASW bread and butter area, um, famous in the Cold War. S you know, the reason it's famous is subs coming up here. Soviet subs having to come down to the Atlantic if they wanted to um, mess with NATO shipping. You know, sh theoretically, if the war has gone hot, then you'd have all the convoys of military equipment having to cross the Atlantic to get to Europe. Uh, those subs have to come through here to to be able to influence that. And, okay, um, so we're going to be doing ASW in this area, where do we even begin to look when it's just this giant ocean out here? Well, kind of think of it in a in a way that is a, specifically for the game, right? Um, the scenario designer probably made it so that the pacing is just right to what they want, and so if he's already set this waypoint up for that ship, I didn't modify it, that's what he did. So we're just going to drive down that line of bearing because that's probably how the mission was designed. So with that in mind, the submarines could be, let's just say in this forward hemisphere of our, tr our travel, okay? Now they could be on the flanks here, maybe pretending that a uh, submarine got into position and uh, was stalking you for a while, just watching you, waiting to ambush you. Um, that's possible. Um, most likely the submarines are usually going to be kind of in this area heading towards you because their job is to kill you so they want to close and get a weapon off right so they'll the and in terms of time we don't want to put the submarine like you know 100 nautical miles out that way and you guys just never see each other because that's a boring scenario you'd never find anything okay so the we're just gonna kind of guess the subs kind of gonna the submarines there's multiple ones are going to be kind of around here um that's just, we're just, just just me guessing in the open ocean. Now, if uh, we had stuff where we're constrained by geography, and if the mission was we had to go through this uh, strait or something right here, um, I would then be worried that submarines were sitting around here or in these little waterways, because imagine if you came through in a convoy and you're coming down this way and the sub's like sitting right here, he's masked by the terrain, right? Your sonar is not gonna really detect him uh, until you got past this point and he's looking this way already waiting for you he's going to get his torpedo off and kill you so it's kind of um, something you assess based on what the mission's asking you to do and where to go uh, but out in the open ocean it's, it could be the sub could be anywhere but we're just going to guess in terms of uh, scenarios because this is a game uh, that is somewhere up front in front of us like that okay all right so we've got that search plan uh, in our head where we're just gonna look around this line of bearing and there's also these two merchants here is kind of peculiar right they could be masking something you could imagine the sub trying to hide underneath that for all the noise they have so um, to get this started we can launch some helicopters now I'm gonna pull their waypoints out uh, quite a bit here yeah, that's good yep pull that out Okay, let's go back to this is Uh We've got two SH-2s and we're only gonna launch one because I wanna have one in reserve. The, the thing I don't want is to put all my helicopters out and then they all run out of fuel at the same time or they all um, lose, you know, run out of sauna buoys or weapons at the same time and I've got no backup. If I don't have a backup, then if if they were in contact um there's a potential there that they could lose it because the sub's going to try to maneuver away and um if you have a good strong buoy filled out yeah he might be trapped in it for a little while but it's going to take a while for a helicopter to come home and come back um so it's just always good to have a, a reserve helicopter so the Estosin is going to launch one and we'll keep one in reserve because it's got two and we'll just play with these two helicopters now everybody's going a search speed of two-thirds and just kind of passively looking. Once these helicopters get up, um, my plan is to 
We'll take a ruler out here. Alright, we'll do a... My plan is to drop um, Sonobuies kind of periodically down this the lines of travel and um, they're not they're not there to specifically look for submarines if they if they detect one that's great okay I just want to drop a few kind of as an insurance measure if I get shot at by the submarine there the torpedoes are gonna be so incredibly loud that one of those sonobuies should pick them up and if they pick them up early enough then the vessels that we're we're playing are going to have time to get out of the way essentially and then we're going to do some um, we'll do some stuff when we get engaged with the rulers and the markers to kind of help us figure out where that submarine actually is and to get the helicopter on top of them as soon as possible all right so the helicopters are up we want to turn the surface search radar on and we're going to drop just a few SSQ-53 Daifar sauna buoys. The range on them I think is two or three uh, nautical miles. Not great, but they are small things, so they, they don't have um, big hydrophones and a lot of power and stuff like, you know, hull-mounted equipment does. Okay. Let's drop another one, maybe there. Okay, that's good. I don't know why he's not wanting to go. Okay, well I think I gotta give him a waypoint first. Alright, that's fine. Let's do this all over again. Here we go. We'll get him out. Same thing, surface search radar is on. This is just so if we get the chance we are detecting a, um, a mast, if that happens, we'll, we'll be able to do that. I don't think we will, but um, we'll just do it in case. I think we're set. Um, we've got initially our sauna buoys are out, and we are going to drop the pattern, and we'll start to see if anybody shoots at us. We're, we'll most likely pick that up, um, but we're just doing a passive search now. The active ranges are pretty bad, and um, I don't recommend really using the active sonar too much. Uh, if the, 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 the thing with the active sonar is um, when you bang away on active, let's see this guy's range, I think it was uh, 7 kilometers on active pass, yep, active, yep. Okay, so when you're going active, um, the sound has to hit the target, say it hits these ships, right? It has to have enough power to come back. That, that power level in this game is going to be the enough power to go out 7 kilometers, hit something, and come back. Um, okay, but you gotta imagine that same power is going beyond the contact for seven kilometers or more um, to the point where it's going to be, uh, it, it'll actually go beyond that further, but um, you just think of it as a simple thing where it can go beyond the target, also that range, and it's going to be detected by whoever's on the other side of that. So not necessarily to the point where you can um, detect a return coming from that sound going out beyond that range. Um, but they'll know at that point that there's uh, somebody going active and they're going to figure out generally where you're at and start to maneuver to fire down that direction. Um, so 
I just like to stick with passive searches, but certainly you can go active. Um, sometimes you can kind of do that as like a sweeping thing to force somebody to maneuver a certain way or whatever. Um, but yeah, I just, I like the passive stuff. Maybe that's because I am uh, a former Totoray guy in real life. So I'm probably just biased, but certainly all the ranges are for active stuff are reduced compared to the passive hull mounted in this game. So uh, it's definitely nice to have the ability to stay quiet while you're searching and the other guy doesn't know that you're doing it just yet. Okay, so with that I'm going to leave it. Uh, we're just going to drop these buoys and uh, we'll come back next time with the buoys fully out and we'll just wait to see what develops as our search goes down this line um, to find the submarine. Alright, so catch you next one. Bye!